So I've been doing van life for a few years now and there's a few things like whilst I planned a lot of stuff before I moved into the van there's a few things I've learned along the way that I thought might you might find helpful. Um, so yeah showers for the first thing for me I love a good hot shower um, but when I moved into the van I didn't have an income I was living off savings so I wound up um, using some local surf clubs usually have hot showers for free otherwise you can try out um, local rec centres they might only charge two or three dollars and yeah then when I wound up getting a remote job I got a gym membership so that was really luxurious for me um, and so I picked um, a gym, I use different gyms on different sides of the country but um, I would just go for the ones that are cheaper because I'm really not using the gym facilities other than the showers um, and I also um, go for ones that have the most locations and some of the <laughs> some of the things I found are if you want hot water then you generally want to go at different times of the day because um, the smaller gyms they will run out of hot water so I tend to go like after 8 or before 3 because between 3 and, and 7 it's quite busy and yeah um, I also find that the places that have individual showers with separate doors to them like they're a separate room rather than in a communal area with the toilets are better because when you're having a nice steamy hot shower and someone decides to go number two in the toilet, it's not much fun. Um, I find that caravan parks, you know, they have showers and toilets all together and I'm like, why, why? Anyway, um, yeah, that's my hot tip on showers. When I started out, I had a 20 litre tank full of water that would, I've got an electric pump that goes up to my sink and then I had another 20 litre exit tank as well for all the grey water. However, what I found was the grey water would get really stinky. It was a pain to try and like empty it somewhere without someone looking sideways at me. Um, so what I tend to do now is I've got a bucket in my sink and I use that and then just empty it out as I go when I'm washing my dishes. Pretty much I just use it to wash my dishes, brush my teeth and wash my hands. Um, and it's a, lot le it's a lot more discreet emptying a bucket somewhere than a full 20 litres of water. Um, and then that has also allowed me then to keep another 20 litres of water underneath my sink. So now I can carry 40 litres of water and I just change the hose over. Um, so it's like, it's nothing technical. <laughs> it's not heavy duty plumbing. Um, and yeah, so just change the hose over from one tank to the next. And that saved me a lot. And yeah, it is a pain like filling up my tanks. I have to admit sometimes, you know, you've got to try and find a tap to do that. And then you've got to like carry it as well. Um, but some of the places I find taps are like at jetties because jetties are where fishermen have got to, you know, um, what do you call it? Skillet the fish, clean the fish, descale the fish. So they t tend to have a tap there. Um, otherwise, petrol stations, you can try and fill up there and otherwise friends and family. Something else I really need to consider when I park up during the day is where the sun is. So am I going to be parking under a tree out in full sun because my solar panels are on my roof and I need power throughout the day to run my 240 for my laptops, make food, that sort of thing. So some people have their solar panels separate, like a, a movable, portable solar panels. So they can park up under a tree in the cool of the shade for the day and but they put their solar panels out in the sun which has its advantages for sure. Um, for me, I can't, uh, less hassle for me. Um, so I had them installed on the roof and I, so what, not only do I need to consider am I under a tree, out in full sun, but the movement of the sun as well. So where I am right now, initially this morning I was in full sun, but as the sun has moved, I'm, I'm in the shade. So I'm not filling up, topping up my power. And whilst driving the van obviously charges my um, battery a lot quicker and I get more power. Uh, I still really do rely on that sun during the day because it just kind of keeps me at a level that you know I'm not dropping any power so yeah that's definitely something I've had to think about when I park up. Okay so the final piece of the puzzle or biggest tip I can give you is about stealth camping and uh, when I first did van life in Canada I got some good ideas there about where to park that would sort of you know keep me um, sort of under the radar <laughs> and so when I um, started in Australia I really had an idea of where I wanted to park at night that I would feel happy and safe and secure 
and not bother anybody. And so there's a lot of signs in Australia that uh, when you're at the beach that say no, no camping. And I adhere to those signs because I don't want a ranger coming and banging on my van and trying to find me. And I've had a few people say that if you don't, if you don't answer the bang, then they can't find you because they, don't, they can't prove that you're actually sleeping in your van. And that's all well and good and it does work. But for me personally, I, my, a restful night's sleep is more important to me. And I know that I will feel more safe as well if I'm around more people. So I tend to go in more um, high density residential areas where possible. So when I started in Perth, I had an idea, like there was a few fair bit of street parking I could go take advantage of that had um, like when there's like blocks of flats or there's a hotel or somewhere where it's high density living, you're able to blend in more because sometimes it can actually be the residents that call the ranger on you. Um, I have heard instances where people from in vans are just using people's front lawns as a toilet and <laughs> banging doors and this sort of thing. So when I set my van up, I purposely set it up so I could just jump through from the front cab to the back. I put my sun visor up as soon as I park up so then people can't really see me jumping into the back cab either. Um, yeah, so some of the other places that I choose to park at, maybe I might pick a backpackers because um, in smaller towns you don't get that high density living. So um, I would might aim for a backpackers because obviously people in vans would stay at backpackers. They are noisier though, so they tend to party late night and the road, it's usually on a, a busier road. So even a car going past at like 60 k's an hour or whatever, or slowly, it's still, the van still moves, there's noise. Um, yeah, so I, I like quieter streets where possible. You need to think about um, if it's on a hill, even sometimes the side of the road when it gets to the curb, might, it might be on a, quite often is a down slant. So you're kind of falling out of bed through the, throughout the night. So you do need to think about that as well. So yeah, what I do is I just, um, I do everything I need to do, I brush my teeth, empty my sink, have everything tied up, um, and then I just park up and then I don't have to open any doors. Um, I tend not to put my full light on because you can still see a little bit of it through the front, but you can't really see anything from the back. But I just use my torch and pretty much I'm just, by the time I'm doing that, I don't, don't park up until it's dark and I'm ready for bed really. So generally I'm just on my phone scrolling, <laughs> doom scrolling as we all do before we go to bed. Um, yes, so I sort of personally would advise like not parking at beach, up at beaches at night because once the ranger does um, ping you like you're on his radar, he's looking for you or she's looking for you. So, um, you know, you, it's much better to sort of fly under the radar where possible. And plus, you know, we still need to respect um, residents and their privacy and you know their ability to sleep at night as well so it's it's all about just considering others you know and I think you know we all need to do that um, in everyday life um, yeah so that's my tips the other the other you could probably go to a laundromat as well so a lot of laundromats are open 24 hours they tend to be more in industrial areas though but you know, you could get away with that for sure. So I tend not to be out in remote areas because I don't feel safe when I'm not around other people. Um, but yeah, it works for me.